Tonight, MLAs return to Regina as the spring legislative sitting kicks off. Also, $10 a day childcare will be a reality at some Saskatchewan daycares much sooner than expected. Plus, former Isla Lacrosse boarding school survivors push for recognition after not being included in residential school settlements. One of the things that they always say is my story hasn't been told. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Monday, March 6th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Today marked the start of the Saskatchewan Spring Legislative Sitting. But before the first question period got underway, a long-serving MLA said goodbye. Adam Hunter has the story. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, Premier, colleagues. Uh, all good things uh, have to come to an end, so they say. And, uh, After more than 23 years on the job, Lumsden Morse MLA Lyle Stewart stood in the Assembly for the final time. He says he's stepping down due to health reasons. It was my intention to finish uh, out this term, at which time I would have put in 25 years of service as an MLA. Due to my health concerns, it appears that I will not be able to serve my constituents and my province in the way that I have in the past. In 2014, Stewart was diagnosed with prostate cancer but stayed on as Minister of Agriculture. Four years later, he stepped down from that post due to a colon cancer diagnosis. He's lived with prostate cancer for years, and in recent weeks, his condition has worsened. I uh, need to spend more of the time that I have left with my grandchildren and my dear friend Juanita. Many of the members who sit in these seats are among my best and most trusted friends. I hope uh, to keep up these uh, relationships. So, uh. Stewart was elected in 1999 and served in opposition before the Saskatchewan party formed government in 2007. In 2009, while on his way to the legislature, Stewart pulled off the road to help what he thought was a stranded motorist. The man tried to take Stewart's car and attacked him. Stewart was able to fight him off and called 911. His attacker was arrested and received a four-year jail sentence. As a friend, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, um, and a colleague, it's unfortunate when anyone uh, resigns uh, due to health concerns. And I, I think the, uh, the concerns that I would have uh, would go far beyond uh, the actual resignation, but to his, his personal health. Last fall, Stewart invited convicted murderer Colin Thatcher to the legislature for the throne speech. For that gaffe, he was relieved of a provincial secretary position. Despite that incident, Mo says Stewart was a respected voice around the caucus table. Nobody serves uh, uh, flawlessly, none of us, uh, and, and most certainly. Um, but Lyle has served, I think, uh, very much uh, at, at the, uh, you know, with understanding um, what that service means and, and, and who you represent in this place and who you represent as, uh, in his time as a minister. Stewart closed his speech by saying goodbye for now to his colleagues. Adam Hunter, CBC News, Regina. The Saskatchewan Liberal Party will decide whether or not not to ditch its name this month. A motion has been filed for the Liberals' annual general meeting on the 25th. If the motion passes, people will be able to submit ideas for a new name. Party leader Jeff Walter says the Liberal brand has deteriorated over time. He says if the motion passes, there would also be a leadership vote. $10 a day childcare will be a reality for some parents in our province much sooner than expected. The new fee takes effect in Saskatchewan April 1st, three years ahead of schedule. It applies to children under six who attend licensed daycares on a full-time basis. But as Laura Sharpaletti tells us, there's still a shortage of regulated spaces and workers. How old are you guys? I'm five. I'm four. In just a matter of weeks, the parents of all these children will only pay $10 a day for daycare. Ottawa and the province signed a child care deal in 2021. Saskatchewan is one of the first provinces to reach the $10 a day target. With this announcement, families in Saskatchewan, since the fees were reduced, are saving between $400 and $600 
a month. Now, we know that with the high cost of living, that's real money that's going the distance to help people pay for groceries, pay for rent. But many cannot get their children into daycare, period. YMCA Saskatoon has built two new childcare facilities in the past three years, and it still has more than 700 children on its wait list. The cost uh, of, of building or renovating buildings for childcare is really, really difficult. And the province has done a better job in the last few years of increasing that amount, but still it's uh, with the cost of construction and cost of lease, it's really, really difficult and you have to be very, very careful as to how you uh, plan to expand. Dodge says a daycare with 70 children needs about 20 staff members. The province's goal is to create 28,000 licensed childcare spots by 2026. The minister says more training spaces are needed. Develop some long-term plans in terms of wages, um, looking at benefits, that sort of thing, so that we can attract uh, a qualified workforce. Still, parents with children already in licensed daycares are thrilled with the $10 per day pay structure. This mother has put all four of her children in YMCA Regina Child Care, and two are there now. Now that they are down to a $10 a day fee is absolutely amazing. It helps so much for us to be able to put continue putting away education money for our kids. The federal government says the new fee will allow many parents to return to work, which it says is beneficial to an economy that has taken a beating in recent years. Laura Sharpaletti, CBC News, Regina. Saskatchewan's official opposition is applauding $10 a day child care, but is wondering how much credit the province actually deserves. Your fees are welcome news, uh, but the question remains, Mr. Speaker. We have a question, and it's a simple one. How much of today's announcement is provincial dollars, and how much of this announcement comes from the feds? Here, here. Saskatchewan is receiving $1.1 billion from Ottawa over five years to make daycare more affordable and accessible. The province hasn't bumped up its funding, though. It's still allocating $80 to $90 million a year to child care. The government says fees were already lower in Saskatchewan than other provinces, and it didn't require as much to get down to $10 a day. A 32-year-old man was sentenced to 18 years in prison at Saskatoon's Court of Kings bench today. Justin Ballantyne pleaded guilty to manslaughter in the 2020 death of Brandon Applegate. Applegate was a 22-year-old father of three and youth advocate. He was shot by Ballantyne after the two had an argument. He later died in hospital. Ballantyne was high on meth when he shot Applegate. Before sentencing, he apologized for his actions and said he feels ashamed. Applegate's family spoke outside court. It's as good as it can get, and like the impact statements were read, we, we don't want nothing ill to come towards Justin. We just we want him to grow and become better and to put this in the past and grow and to not ever let it happen again because... This kind of a grief nobody should go through. Justice Natasha Crook said 18 years was one of the longest sentences she's ever given for manslaughter. Valentine will be eligible for parole after nine years. If you use e-transfer for your daily banking, this next story could apply to you. E-transfers can be cancelled after the fact. In some cases, even if the recipient has auto deposit. It's a lesson an Edmonton woman learned too late. Go Public's Erica Johnson has the details. And this is where he keeps his tools. Christine Mason sometimes sells her husband's power tools when he's done with them. Like this grinder she posted online last fall. After creating the ad on Kijiji, someone says he'll pay 480 bucks, but will be coming straight from work, so no cash. 480 is, is a lot to grab out of the bank, and is e-transfer fine? And that's when I decided, um, sure. But after he leaves with the tools, she checks her TD bank account. No e-transfer, even though she'd set up auto deposit, a feature advertised as secure that allows funds to be directly deposited into an account. No security question needed. Can you give me anything to go on? When she calls TD, she learns someone had sent an e-transfer the night before, but before it got deposited, cancelled it. I, I, was, I was so shocked. Because, I mean, this is, this is um, put in place for our security. She's not the only one who's never heard of the risk. Wow, I didn't know that was a possibility. That's weird. Uh, That's I mean, messed up. I'm just finding out about this. That's a little disturbing. 
In a GoPublic test, customers from all the big banks and several credit unions sent e-transfers to accounts with auto deposit set up. Bank customers were not able to cancel the e-transfer after hitting send. Some credit union customers, though, were able to cancel the e-transfer more than half an hour later. Wow, yeah, that is very tricky and something that should not be happening. This fintech expert says you got to see it to believe it. You're really not protected until like you've really seen that money settle inside of your account. After GoPublic contacted TD about Christine Mason's case, the bank gave her back the $480 she'd lost, calling it a goodwill gesture. Mason says, though, from now on, she's only e-transferring with friends and family. For all future sales, it's cash. Erica Johnson, CBC News, Vancouver. In Regina, renting and getting around on electric scooters could soon be an option. A document on the province's tender website indicates the city of Regina is gathering information on electric scooter rentals. The city is trying to find out what businesses would be interested in setting up shop. Saskatoon is currently working on a similar pilot project. Last fall, SGI changed its regulations to allow electric scooters on the road. Well, like so many of you, I had really hoped we were done with these really cold temperatures, but here we are. And this porcupine is just trying to have a sleep in this tree in Saskatoon. So if someone wants to wake him up when the cold snap is over, that would be great. So what's up for the rest of the week? Ethan is back and he'll have your forecast after the break. Stay with us. This weather update is brought to you by It's March, It's Madness at Capital GMC Buick Cadillac. Well, believe it or not, that is California. Several areas in that normally sunny state are bracing for another blast of winter weather. Northern parts of the state are under a winter storm warning, expecting up to a meter of snow in the next 24 hours. That much has already fallen on parts of San Bernardino County, east of Los Angeles, over the weekend. Many communities are snowed in and several highways are still closed. And our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now. At least it's not that here, but it's yeah. cold. <laughs> yeah, it, it certainly is. We are uh, very much below seasonal. We are expecting a little bit of that snow to come our way. It's not even the Ides of March yet, and they're getting some very extreme weather. So we will see what comes our way. But uh, for us, of course, it is the cold weather, and we're looking at extreme cold warnings in the very far north of the province, looking at wind chills in that area, dropping close to minus 45 tonight, maybe even a little bit uh, lower than that. And uh, frostbite possible, of course, in just a few minutes. Even eastern Saskatchewan, this board kind of undershoots a little bit. So uh, Yorkton up toward Prince Albert, we could be looking for wind chills near minus 40 tonight. So take care if you're in that area as well. Temperature wise, we are below average for this time of year. We're continuing that trend that we saw at the end of last week and through the weekend. Mid minus teens for much of us, even in the southwest where we had the warmest air today, you should be closer to the freezing mark. But you were only around minus six, minus seven. These wind chills, of course, going to drop rapidly. That's what's fueling those extreme cold warnings. And in south and central Saskatchewan, no warning for us, but getting very close to minus 30 with the wind chill in some west central portions of the province. Part of the whole reason that we're going to be uh, seeing this temperature trend over the next few days is the setup of the jet stream and why they're getting that wonky weather in California. Big ridge stretching over Alaska to our west, and that's kind of just put the jet stream in a bit of a knot, and it's going to keep it that way. In fact, we'll put it in motion, and you can see really nothing changes over these next few days. So our conditions temperature-wise not going to be changing until about the weekend or so, so we'll be a little bit on the colder side below average. Now, we are watching the north side of a system moving through the northern plain states of the United States. There's uh, weather warnings in effect there, but not for us. We'll catch the north edge of it, though, as it moves through tonight. We're looking for some snow in southwestern and west central sections. That moves eastward through southern Saskatchewan through the day tomorrow. Most of the rest of us going to be mostly cloudy with a chance of some flurries and then high pressure clearing things out for the north Thursday, but still a little bit of snow possible along the very southern portion of the province on Thursday afternoon. In terms of snowfall totals, we could see two to five 
five centimeters in southwestern and west central portions. Val Marie looking to catch the brunt of it. As that system moves eastward through the day on Wednesday, one to three centimeters in places like Regina, Moose Jaw, even Weyburn, Estevan. Yorkton northward, I don't think you're looking for much, especially as we head through Thursday. I think it'll just be closer to the uh, southern border of the province that we're going to be seeing that snow. A bit breezy with some warmer conditions in the southwest today. Look for breezy conditions to continue over the next couple of days and through the night tonight, fueling those wind chills in south and central, getting close to 40 kilometers an hour in terms of our wind gusts, both uh, tomorrow and on Wednesday as well, before we start to see those dissipate a little bit heading into Thursday. But for Regina, again, I think a real cloudy trend with some snow here the next few days with temperatures below average for this time of year and a little bit breezy as well. And then things will warm up, still not quite at normal and we will finally get some sunshine heading into the beginning of next week. Saskatoon, normal for this time of year, minus two, and you'll be about 10 degrees below that for uh, these next few days here. And looking into Friday, Saturday, I think cloud cover will still be sticking around. You won't be seeing that system as much as Regina will as we go through the day tomorrow. But then as we head into next week, a bit of a warm-up, Sam. Still cold, though, as we head uh, through this first bit of March. You did warn me that March is like a wintry month, so I'm bracing for it. <laughs> That's true. Thanks, Ethan. You bet. What? The interns? Hey guys, after you shoved that old lady... A familiar logo on Saturday Night Live over the weekend during a skit, an actor playing an intern was front and center wearing a gray shirt with the classic green and white University of Saskatchewan logo. The appearance has been shared by proud alumni and students across social media, but questions remain on how it came to be featured on the popular NBC comedy show. A U of S spokesperson told CBC in a statement, the appearance was a surprise to the university. We'll be back after the break. A group of boarding school survivors in Isle Lacrosse want to be recognized as residential school survivors. Hundreds of people, most of them Métis, have been fighting for decades. But the process has been so long and arduous, some worry they won't live to see justice. Sam Sampson reports. We need this thing settled before we bury any more of our survivors. It hurts every time we do that. All this space, but William Case was trapped. That's the place I grew up over there. The school was over there, but you grew up over there. Just there, yeah. Could you see your house from the schoolyard? Yeah. I didn't have that opportunity. William spent nine years at the church-run boarding school in Isle La Crosse, but he and other survivors here have been left out of past compensation yeah. deals. We weren't allowed to speak our language. We were told not to. And uh, our culture was not meant for us. It was uh, the work of the devil, they said. It's still hurt to help. Survivors have bravely shared stories of abuse and discrimination for years. We apologize for failing to protect you. Canada compensated and apologized to residential school survivors. Day scholars are in the midst of a settlement. But so far, nothing for the boarding school survivors of Isle Cross. Nothing for William, nothing for his sister Lena. She died five years ago. Why is this so urgent now? Because we're all beyond six to five. I'm 72 years old, so I'll be 73 in April. When people have just suddenly died. No, I'm not immune to that. I could go at any time. Some say the school's complicated history excluded them from past settlement agreements. The Catholic Church opened up the Isle of Cross boarding school before Canada's residential school system started. About 1,500 children came here from northern Saskatchewan communities between the mid-1800s and the 1970s, mostly Métis. Canada and the provinces argued back then about who was responsible for the Métis, so both funded the school at different points. You're in the front seat. Go towards the church. This area where it's fenced off, where all the machinery is, that's where the residential school was, yeah. Okay. For decades, Louis Gardner has shared his desire to be recognized as a survivor. It means a lot to him and his future. And how many grandchildren do you have? About 16, I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah. What do you hope the story of Isle Lacrosse is for your grandchildren? 
Well, we want to make to a healthy community. That's why I said that healing journey is very important. And we can do the healing ourselves. Our people can do it. That's where compensation comes in, for the community. Louis wants better Métis programming in schools, maybe a new treatment centre. What if they don't give that recognition and that compensation? Well, we still have to fight that. Eh? We have to keep going. And, and if we don't, if, if we're gone, and then I think we have to leave that to our, our intergenerational uh, people to, to continue that fight. We are still here. A young and innocent Métis child stands at the doorway of an indifferent and foreign world. Even if the world won't, those in Isle Lacrosse recognize their survivors with this monument. It's symbolic for Métis elder Dorothy de Brule. I mean, to you, what does that mean, we are still here? That we are resilient, that uh, they haven't broken us. What would recognition and acknowledgement from Ottawa and Saskatchewan mean? It would mean that we are recognized as a people, number one, that we matter just as much as everyone else in Canada. Um, it would mean uh, satisfaction in some way that, yeah, you know, we, we, we fought and, and we won. What victory looks like has yet to be uncovered, but tenacity, that's pretty clear. Sam Sampson, CBC News, Isle of Cross, Saskatchewan. And Ethan is back with one last look at your weather. And we're looking for increasing cloudiness through the south end Regina tonight, Sam. It'll be cold tomorrow morning at minus 16 with a wind chill close to uh, minus 26. Cloudy conditions are going to be uh, sticking with us through the afternoon, I think. Temperature not warming up all that much. will be between minus 10 and minus 15 through much of south and central Saskatchewan. Wind gusts picking up through the afternoon close to 40 kilometers an hour. I think that's where they're going to top out. Saskatoon, a little sunnier for you. I think you're going to avoid the system moving through overnight. You'll be around minus 19. But again, a wind close to minus 30 by the time you wake up. And then as we head through the afternoon, cloud cover going to build back in. I think you'll escape the snow and flurries. We're looking for a high also around minus 14. Again, cloudy winds around 40 kilometers an hour or so. Now, it will be cloudy in south and central, but in northern portions tonight, it'll be cold, but clear enough likely to see the worm moon. This is the March full moon, and this is uh, most visible tonight and tomorrow night as well. And uh, it's called that, according to the Farmer's Almanac at least, because it corresponds with worms emerging from the soil at this time of year in spring. But for us, I think we're going to have to wait a little while longer, Sam. I think the worm's uh, not going to come out in these conditions quite yet. I cannot get my eyebrows high enough to determine how frozen the ground is for worms <laughs> to come out right now. Yeah, I think, think they're pretty far down there. I think so too. Thanks, Ethan. You bet. And before we leave you tonight, you may notice a lot of green at Saskatchewan airports over the next couple days. Athletes are returning home after a successful couple weeks at the Canada Winter Games on Prince Edward Island. They've been looking forward to this opportunity for two and three years now. They came here, they performed, they had a great time. And so we're, we can't be happier with uh, how, our, how our teams represented our province. Team Saskatchewan earned 20 medals on Prince Edward Island, three gold, seven silver, and ten bronze. It was good enough to finish sixth overall. It was also an improvement over the 17 that Saskatchewan athletes earned in Red Deer in 2019. The next Canada Games are the summer of 2025, and they are in St. John's, Newfoundland. And that is it for us tonight. For news anytime, you can head to cbc.ca slash sask or slash saskatoon, or you can subscribe to CBC Saskatchewan's YouTube channel. Ethan will be back with more local news and weather at 11. Thank you so much for watching and have a great night. Stay warm. <laughs>